So welcome back everybody to another review of a film from the Columbia Noir number no. 5 collection. So uh, yeah, the first two films were pretty damn good. But unfortunately, this third effort is a noticeable drop in quality and that is Tokyo Joe from 1949. Once again starring Humphrey Bogart, directed by Stuart Heisler, who also did The Glass Key. Clock's in at 88 minutes long, so I was alongside Bogart, Alexander Knox, who was also in The Sea Wolf and Crack in the World. As well as Suzuze Hayakawa, who was also in The Bridge on the River Kwai and House of Bamboo, both of which came after this. And uh, yeah, Joe Barrett returns to Tokyo after World War II, where he once owned a bar called Tokyo Joe's and deserted his wife Trina uh, when he uh, left for World War II uh, to go and fight. So uh, they have a seven year old daughter, Kimura forces Joe into piloting war criminals by revealing that during the war, Trina made treasonous propaganda broadcasts. So yeah. It's a decent effort. I'm not going to slate this too harshly because, you know, it's only a few years after World War Two, So, you know, there's going to be some complex aspects to it in terms of that because, you know, Jap Japanese sentiment wasn't exactly at an all-time high in America at that point. But So the fact that it actually attempted to make a story in Japan is noteworthy at, this, at the end of the day. And even though it is an noticeable drop in, the, in, F, in quality over the previous two, I was still far from bored by it. Bogart is once again really good. The supporting cast is solid. I like the setting. It has its fun moments, especially a judo fight between um, Bogart and uh, uh, his friend, uh, which is really rather enjoyable. The pacing is on point. The plot, though far from the most complex, while somewhat lacking in characterization, was still engrossing enough. The film noir aspects are well handled, and it didn't feel its length one bit. It, the 88 minutes just flew by, quite frankly. Just a shame then that this wasn't actually made in Japan. Uh, the track, the um, location shots were, but you can tell that there were parts of it where uh, the Humphrey Bogart has a stand-in because he didn't actually go to Japan himself. The rest of the film was on sets in the US, so yeah, you can tell that it's a, uh, a you know a you know a stand-in for Bogart at times when you know he's walking around in Japan and stuff like that. So yeah, it would have been a lot better had it been actually set in Japan, like House of Bamboo was which also starred Saisu Hayakawa, which was directed by Samuel Fuller. That is definitely a better Japanese effort than this. But still, yeah, it's also um, not got much in the way of excitement. I know the finale has some decent decent tension to it. There isn't quite enough of it throughout. Uh, so, uh, yeah, by no means my favourite effort from this release. Uh, but, yeah, Humphrey Bogart, the, the sporting cast... And some of the fun elements do at least keep things going. And like I said, I wasn't bored by the plot. But yeah, the characterization could be a lot better. And uh, yeah, especially when you compare it to other Humphrey Bogart efforts, which have him playing a uh, kind of an anti-hero. Whereas uh, alongside, you know, a, a woman that he's, you know, in love with, there are more, you know, in-depth aspects to those kind of things from other films that he's done but yeah still far from my least favorite comedy noir effort there are ones that are rated even lower than this so yeah but unfortunately it only gets three stars out of five so yeah bit of a shame and a bit of a slump in the quality but still we've got two four star out of five films and yeah at least this wasn't a film that i hated but yeah nonetheless thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye